thought I'd make a video discussing bayonets, Danish Krag Jorgensen rifle and carbines, since I've collected a few of them, as you can see here. These are model 1889 short bayonets. They measure 13 and a half inches long with a nine inch blade length. It's a somewhat modern design for 1889. It's a shorter length than what's typically seen. And that's due to the length of the rifle, which is 52 and a half inches. And that matches the rifle plus bayonet length or reach of others in the area like the Lee Metford or the Gewehr 1888. Of course, it's quite a bit shorter than many others of the era, like the French Lebel rifle. It's interesting that there's no muzzle ring. So the bayonet hangs off of the long lug located on the underside of the barrel jacket. That likely doesn't affect accuracy as much as a directly barrel mounted bayonet would. This has a lever lock on the end of the pommel, which lifts up and then snaps into place. Push to remove, and it locks on the end of the barrel jacket mounted bayonet lug right there. This one I'm showing is a first pattern. The first batch was outsourced to Alex Kopel in Saligen, Germany, a famous knife and sword making town. I've seen others that were made by Weyersberg, also in Saligen. These ones have leather grip panels, as you can see here. I've heard that some were retrofit later on to wood grips, which makes sense as you can see the grips on this example aren't in the best condition. This is a close up of the maker's mark and right below it, right here, it's hard to make out, but that's a 90 for made in 1890. And the serial number is located on the end of the pommel here next to the catch. And it's right in the 11,000 range. scabbard is a leather body with steel ends and it has a small spring-loaded catch here to fit onto the guard and retain it. These two are the second pattern bayonets. You might see them referred to as the model 1889-93 by collectors but that's not an official designation. They have wood grip panels to replace the leather and they were domestically made at the arsenal in Copenhagen. You can see the maker markings on both of them as, long, as well as the dates, the one on the left being made in 1907 and the one on the right in 1902. And the serial numbers on the bottom, 62,000 and 55,000. Note on condition, the Danish army wasn't the best equipped, and therefore a lot of these rifles and bayonets saw heavy use serving from the 1890s up through the end of World War II. The rifles usually have most of the bluing worn down. I'm lucky to have one that doesn't, but as you can see, a lot of these bayonets saw heavy use. Now you might also see these bayonets being made into field knives, the model 1923. And to do that, they filled in the slot at the end and removed the lever lock. These are two model 1915 long bayonets. They're 22 inches long overall with a 17 and a half inch blade length. Around this time, development was starting on a carbine, or more accurately, a short rifle pattern of the Krag. As a part of that program, a longer bayonet was made to match the overall reach of the rifle. While this was happening, rumors spread of Germans charging with their backpacks covering their chest. The original rifle's bayonet blade length was too short to penetrate enough, and thus created a need to adapt the carbine bayonet to fit onto the rifle. I'm not sure why the muzzle ring was added, but I'm speculating that the longer blade made more secure mounting necessary, but I'm not sure. Though the handles look like the short bayonet at first glance, there's quite a few differences. The steel of the tang is much thicker, the whole thing being from a one-piece forging. The catch, instead of being on the end of the pommel, is now about an inch in from the end, and it's now a button on the right-hand side. 
then the slot for mounting is a lot longer, extending all the way from the handle near to near the guard. And although this bayonet is much different than the short bayonet, the 1915 pattern can still fit onto the end of the rifle as seen here. I also have this engineer carbine, which is a very rare model. It's a restored sporter, and I made the front band and bayonet lug. However, I modeled them off of the real deal as closely as possible. And this is how the bayonet attaches on this one. You can see that the side catch fits into a cutout on the bayonet lug. And since the cutout is only on the side, but not the bottom, the short bayonet actually won't fit onto this. But you can see how securely the mounted the long bayonet is. Not only is there the muzzle ring, but also the bayonet lug fills in the entire three plus inch length of the slot. There's the side catch right there. The scabbard is similar to as before with the leather body, steel ends, and the same type of spring tab to retain it. The blade, in addition to being much longer, is now a T-shape with a thick spine tapering down to a blunt edge sort of a hybrid between a knife blade and a cruciform spike. And sometimes these are encountered polished, like this example. And I'm not sure if this one is just has a lot of patina on it, but also you can find them blued. These bayonets have the date on the end of the pommel there. That's 1916 and 1917. And the serial number is located on the side of the guard. Flip them over. And the maker's mark is located on the other side of the guard. And interestingly enough, this 1916 bayonet actually doesn't have a maker's mark on it. All of these bayonets have unit markings on the pommels. Just like the Germans, if reassigned from one unit to another, or the unit as nations themselves were changed, the old marking was crossed out and remarked with a new one. Right here, this first pattern, 1889, is unique in that it has two crossed out markings. The first one at the top there is 47B453. And that's how it typically a lot of these are seen, is that there's a number, there's a B, and then another number. The first one corresponds to the number of battalions. In this era, the Danish army had up to 50 battalions. So that at one point this one belonged to the 47th Battalion. I'm not sure what the numbers after the letter mean. In Germany they were the weapon number, maybe some sort of combination of the company and the weapon number. All of these that I've seen are three digits, so I'm, that's what I'm leaning towards. And on this one, as far as what the latest means, I haven't been able to tell. But you can see it's 3FAR616. And here's something interesting. On the tip of the pommel, it's hard to make out, but it's 3FAR616. So it's interesting that it's a, a matching scabbard on this one, and they took the time to mark it on the very tip. One final thing to note is to be careful if you're looking to buy one of these. And that's this right here. This is actually a Norwegian 1894 bayonet, and it's for their version of the Krag Jorgensen, which is very similar in appearance to the Danish 1889 short bayonet. Here they are side by side. The overall size is similar, but the blade on the Norwegian is thinner and a bit shorter, while the handle is larger and longer. The catch, although it's missing on this example, would be located right here in front of the guard. 
The wood grips are a little bit larger, taking up more of the handle, and there's only one rivet holding them on, while the Danish bayonets have two. There's my overview of Danish crag bayonets. I hope you enjoyed the video, maybe you learned something, maybe you have comments or questions. Please post them down below. Thank you.